Today we're going to be looking at manoeuvring and warning signals, which is rule 34. We can jump straight into the first paragraph. Vessels are in sight of one another, a power driven vessel underway, when manoeuvring is authorised or required by these rules, shall indicate that manoeuvre by the following signals on her whistle. So what are the standout points? Of course you've got to be in sight of one another, it applies to power driven vessels underway, and your manoeuvring is authorised or required by these rules. So this isn't just if you're wanting to turn to starboard as part of your passage plan. And then you shall indicate that manoeuvre, so you have to make these whistle signals. One short blast means you're altering to starboard, two short blasts means you're altering to port, and three short blasts means you're operating a stern propulsion. Now of course if you're familiar with flags you'll know these tie in with Echo, India and Sierra. And the morse for these is one, two and three small dits respectively. The single letter flag meaning of course ties in with the rules as well. So echo actually means I'm altering my course to starboard. If we take a look at this situation now, we can see that the red vessel is approaching the blue vessel and it's a crossing situation. The red vessel has got to alter her course to starboard, so she's going to indicate that manoeuvre by sounding one short blast on her whistle and then making a bold alteration of course to starboard. And then in this situation we've got the power driven vessel approaching a sailing vessel. And this time she's actually going to alter course to port so that she can pass upwind of the sailing vessel. And she's going to indicate that manoeuvre by two short blasts on her whistle. Paragraph B goes on to say you can supplement those whistle signals with light signals and they carry the same meanings. So one flash also means altering to starboard, two flashes to port and three flashes astern. It says the duration needs to be about a second, interval between flashes about one second, and interval between successive signals not less than 10 seconds. And this all ties in with the definition of one short blast, which is a blast of about one second's duration. Paragraph C then goes on to say, if you're in a narrow channel or fairway. And this rule actually coincides with rule 9, which we've already covered. So... What this is saying is that if you're intending to overtake somebody and the other vessel's got to take action, you're going to make your intentions clear by sounding either two prolonged blasts followed by one short blast to mean I intend to overtake you on your starboard side, two prolonged blasts followed by two short blasts to mean I intend to overtake you on your port side. And then the vessel to be overtaken is going to sound Morse Charlie, which is one prolonged, one short, one prolonged, one short blast. Of course, for a more thorough explanation of this, I'm going to link up to Rule 9. I've got a video on that one, so you can go and check that out. And that will cover this part of Rule 34 in a lot more detail with a good example. Paragraph D is the one that talks about what you do if you're unsure of what's happening. When vessels in sight of one another are approaching each other, and from any cause, either vessel fails to understand the intentions or actions of the other, or is in doubt whether sufficient action is being taken by the other to avoid collision, the vessel in doubt shall immediately indicate such doubt by giving at least five short and rapid blasts on the whistle. Such signal may be supplemented by a light signal of at least five short and rapid flashes. So you basically just sound this whenever you're unsure of what's going on. If you hear it, it means there's a vessel approaching you and they've got no idea what you're doing. Paragraph E. A vessel nearing a bend or an area of a channel or fairway where other vessels may be obscured by an intervening obstruction shall sound one prolonged blast. Such signal shall be answered with a prolonged blast by an approaching vessel that may be within hearing around the bend or behind the intervening obstruction. So let's take a look at this chart. I don't know the area at all so we're going to assume there's a lot of high rise buildings so nobody can see around any of the turns. You can see the red vessel is proceeding down this channel and as they're nearing the bend they're going to sound one prolonged blast because they can't see what's around the corner. If there's no other vessel there they don't hear a reply so they can proceed round knowing that it should be clear. If however there's this other vessel approaching, as soon as they hear that signal from the red vessel they're going to reply with their own prolonged blast. Both vessels now know that there is vessels approaching round the bend that are out of visible range. Finally, paragraph F. If whistles are fitted on a vessel at a distance apart of more than 100 metres, only one whistle 
shall be used for giving manoeuvring and warning signals. The reason for this is just because of the speed of sound. If the whistles are more than 100 metres apart, another vessel might well hear that as two separate whistles and interpret it as two separate vessels. To avoid that confusion, if you've got two whistles more than 100 metres apart, you're only allowed to sound one. Hopefully you found the information today useful. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.